Hi everybody, welcome back. If you are new, generally what happens here is I generally uh, talk about orchids and do things with orchids and occasionally I do things with houseplants. So I thought I'd just kind of show you this little corner of the living room right now and that's where I grow in my living room. And let's just talk about uh, things that are going on here. So let's start with our snake plant back here. Um, she is still trying to recover from her repot. So she's just kind of chilling back there. Some of those leaves are getting a little bit darker and not quite quite as yellow, but she's still, you know, settling into her new home. And then over here, let's just zoom in on it real quick, is my syndapsis. So I got her in a little four inch pot and she's just kind of taken over. You can kind of see she's going down there. I've actually taken two cuttings off of her already and am propagating those. And then let's go up here. This is a, so the big large green one is a Tradescantia spiderwort, I believe. And then next to her, that red is a Peperomia. I can never remember the name. I'll have all the names on the screen for you guys. And then let's get a little bit closer. Here we have Pom Pom, short for pomegranate, because the flowers have a very pomegranate look to them. But if you can tell, she's got lots and lots and lots of new roots growing there, and there's quite a few in the back. And then that spike you see, well, that spike has been there since I bought her back in, I wanna say uh, November, December timeframe. But she has finished off this leaf right here, and she's finished off, or finished, she's working on that leaf there. And then whenever someone talks about light training, do you see how she kind of was going this way? Well, I've turned her so that she's going towards the light that is coming up from over there. And hopefully that'll help straighten her out a little bit. Down below her, we have our Phalaenopsis speciosa red, who is finishing off this leaf right here. And hopefully we'll start a new one. I have put a little bit of sphagnum moss back here to encourage those roots that are growing off of her to go into the media. Down below them, we have our Phalaenopsis Soko, Sogo Yakitan, who pouted for a little bit, but now, as you can see, she's uh, starting on some new root growth. I don't see a leaf trying to grow in there quite yet, but it should come pretty soon. Next to her, I have a Dendrobium Phalaenopsis No ID that um, when I re <clears throat> went to repot, it split in two, so I am testing it out in Lucca. Next to that is a Tradescanthia Zebrina cutting that I just thought was so cute in this pot right here because it matched the colors. Uh-oh, one of them just jumped out. It's a cutting I just did today, but that's okay. I'll put her back in in just a little bit. There we go. All right, and then here we have my Ficus burgundy, who is just continually putting off new growth. As you can see here, she's finishing off this leaf and there's already a new leaf growing there, as well as over on this side, she's got growth as well as putting on a new leaf. And I believe there's three stalks in there because each one is kind of growing together. I do turn her about once every couple of days just to kind of keep her even. And then over here we have our Tradescanthia Nanook who is not in bloom. She was in bloom for the longest. I guess she's resting, but aren't those leaves just gorgeous? Oh my goodness gracious. And then here we have a Peperomia SP. Um, so apparently they just didn't know what it was. Down here, I moved my Alocasia Polly uh, over here away from the table. And then next to her, we have our Phalaenopsis Sunshine that I recently repotted. And she did go ahead and absorb the two bottom leaves. And so now she's sitting up a little bit better in the pot, whereas when she had the leaves on there, it looked like she was too deep in the pot. Next to her, or well, rather in front of her, is my pride and joy. So I've had the Zygonesia or Zygopedalum. Um, it's a hybrid, I'm sure. But I've had it since 2019. I've mistreated it by repotting it, trying to figure out what it wanted. I actually broke a spike that was coming, and then it had produced this growth back here, as well as the growth that it is now blooming off of. And the cool thing about these are they bloom off of immature growth. So once these blooms are done, then the growth will continue. And in front of them, we have, let's see if I can get over here. So we have, let me move this for real quick. So we have Velvet. She has really deep purple, almost pure royal purple 
um, with just a little hint of white in the lip. But she's finally starting on a leaf and she is also starting on new root growth and that's what that moss is in there for to help her encourage getting that root down into the pot or well, the basket and then of course we have these gorgeous soft cloud blooms look how beautiful and delicate are those those are just absolutely stunning um but this one here most phalaenopsis bloom in the fall and the winter but i have found that this one here blooms year round um, just randomly throws out a spike here and there. My other one I have that's mature also does the same thing. And then next to her we have Peachy. Uh, Peachy was recently repotted as well into this basket. This is the one I thought I was just gonna up pot and she was like, no, you're gonna repot. But this was one of her leaves that I got her with, but she recently finished this growth here and is currently working on a new leaf right here. Let's just turn her here. And then the moss on here is to help with the aerial roots that she has in the pot at the moment to help kind of get her acclimated to her new home. And then over here we have our no ID, I call her Harlequin, again, just recently repotted. And just kind of relaxed, not hasn't done anything. I recently cut her spike. It generally takes about a month for them to kind of realize that the spike is gone and then go back into growth mode. And, over here we have our mama sherry baby so look at this growth right here it is just taken off and then there is a new leaf uh, if we can see it already growing in there as well and then this growth right here was actually a lot larger than her larger than this one when it first started growing and she is taken over the growth pattern and then let's just take her out of the pot real quick because she is already just spitting out roots everywhere. You can actually see them coming out of the pot already. Then over here in front of them, we have what is supposed to be a Dendrobium nobly. I'm going to call it a Dendrobium phalaenopsis. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. It just looks like a Dendrobium nobly to me, not a uh, Dendrobium, sorry, phalaenopsis, not a nobly. And then she does have lots of roots and stuff down there. I'm just waiting on a new growth. I probably won't get a bloom off of this growth here. Here we have another Phalaenopsis soft cloud cakey. Again, the moss is to help encourage the roots that are growing to go into the media. And excitingly enough, we have our Kingianum here, Dendrobium Kingianum, that has a new growth right here and is working on that new growth. So when I repotted this one, it again, broke in half. I don't know if it was already two and then I broke it or if it was originally two, but either way, that is from one of the sections and then that is from the other section. And then next to them is this one here. It's just a succulent I cut off of one of my daughter's plants and I'm not really sure what kind it is. If anybody can tell me in the comments, that'd be great. But I do know that it climbs up. That's what the, uh, the, the skewer is for. Below that is my Dyphenbachia that is just kind of sitting there. I know that pot down there, that pot is just sitting there because I had nowhere else to put it at the moment. Back here is this right here with nothing in it um, is my cyclamen. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them back there. They're just kind of chilling out. They'll start getting water probably in the next couple of months. I probably won't start until late um, August or mid to late August. And then the one that's right there with the dead in it is my star of Bethlehem that is going into dormancy. And then we have our Saigonesia dove of our uh, dove of peace that I think she's going downhill. I'm not sure. And then next to her is ZZ cuttings, uh, leaf cuttings that I put in that pot back in uh, end of February. They are rooted. There's just no new growth on there yet. So that is that. And then let's just look at the bottom of this plant stand right here where we have a no ID Oncidium. Um, the blooms on it look very much like the Wildcat series, one of those. But it is working on a new growth right here that is coming off of the latest growth right there. And next to them in this little setup here is we have some succulents back there and then we have two bromeliad pups that if they ever bloom again will bloom red and then we have this bromeliad that was in my daughter's room not doing very well so it's out here for recovery to see how it looks uh, it doesn't look very well right now it is let's see if we can look in there it is producing some new a new leaf that looks a lot better than the other leaves that have come out so i think it'll be all right all right guys we're just going to end it right here on these gorgeous gorgeous blooms aren't those beautiful 
All right, well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little quick tour of my corner of the living room. And if you have any of these plants and have any suggestions, let me know. And let me know if you think that that right there is a Dendrobium phalaenopsis or a Dendrobium nobili in the comments down below. All right, well, guys, we'll see you on the next one.